Hello, folks. Welcome to Leader Talk. I'm SEAC retired John Wayne Troxel, your host. Today, I have a special guest for my inaugural show here today. He is a former infantryman, a former non-commissioned officer in the to the top battalion, 1st Battalion, 87th Infantry, 10th Mountain Division, combat veteran. But more importantly, he is the chief executive officer of Downrange Supplements. He is my good friend and brother, Kevin Flack. Kevin, welcome to the show. There we go. Give you a little applause, brother. Welcome you to Leader Talk. Brother. Absolutely. Happy to be here, John. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah. So first question I have is, uh, you know, you're in my studio, in my house, in Lakewood, Washington. What the f*** are you doing up here, dude? Well, absolutely crushing commissary samplings with some guy who used to be the uh, senior enlisted advisor, the chairman of Joint Chiefs. Yeah, so... Uh, that's, that's what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So we are we are up here, um, and we are doing some tastings and demos in commissaries uh, here at Joint Base Lewis-McChord. The last two days, uh, we're going to Naval Air Station Whidbey Island tomorrow, and then we'll be at Bremerton Naval Base on Thursday. Doing some PT with the MPs. And it'd be Thursday morning, we'll, we'll be with Colonel Jesse Brewster, a good friend of mine, and the 42nd MP Brigade, getting a little scunion with them. But uh, So, Kevin, you created this brand, uh, Downrange Supplements, uh, with a couple of your business partners. And you're a former young non-commissioned officer, warfighter and everything. So tell me how this whole thing, what was your vision and how did you get to this, brother? Well, initially, you know, we, we started a nonprofit that, that led into the, the supplement company, you know, in, in, in the infantry or in the military in general, you know, physical fitness and continually improving your fighting position is key with everything. Absolutely. Um, and, and a lot of us have struggles when we initially get out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in during my formidable bully years, you know, 17 to 26 and and so my, my communication style and techniques were, were taught as an, an infantry NCO, and those aren't quite looked so highly upon in the civilian world. You're called crass and abrasive. And, and a lot of guys, you know, turn to the bottle, get away from their regiment yeah. in the military. Um, and, and I went through that same process. Um, and I found, you know, after going through the VA and getting over medicated and going down the sick road, yeah. um, you know, I decided to, uh, to kind of make a change and, and I, I rooted myself back to what we what brought me peace initially as a kid, kayaking, you know, hiking, yeah. snowboarding, yeah, yeah. outdoor activities, which, um, and then gym, gym time, obviously. Yeah. But that's what led to downrange, um, excursions, you know, and we helped guys with gym memberships. And I found that getting back on a, a healthy routine, like I had online, Waking yeah. up on a set time, getting into the gym, engaging in a fitness routine, releasing natural endorphins, and then starting your day from there. The the process of of mitigating those issues and getting clarity and getting back on track really really became clear, um, and and that's what started with the nonprofit, and that led into realizing that there's a need for an actual large scale combat veteran owned supplement company that can legitimately be the brand of the troops. That, yeah. they, that they can recognize, that they can call their own. Um, and, and, it, and, it, and it also helps bring us back to, to the guys and gals that we love. Yeah. You know, we can go rotate bases. We can go out there. We can do PT with the troops. We can pump guys and gals up. Yep. You know, and that's, that's, that's the best part of that. But the nonprofit led into the supplement company initially and, and uh, got together with a, a couple of great business par partners, you know, Peter, Peter Shalasi and Adam Neely. And, and uh, we've been, you know, kicking it down the road ever since, you know, formulating the best products that we can. Um, conducive to mission effectiveness. Everything's formulated um, for that reason. Nothing's on the DOD banned substance list, so nobody's getting in trouble with their UPL. Um, and we kind of went with it from there. So, brother, we, and that's how we met uh, to our audience here, you know. Um, so our mutual friend, Colton Smith, who happens to be a brand ambassador, I am now a brand ambassador for Downrange Supplements. But, uh, we met through Colton, and and if you don't know who Colton Smith is, uh, you know he's airborne ranger, infantryman, you know UFC uh, uh, champion for the uh, Ultimate Fighter show, and uh, and now he's uh, doing some special things in the military. But he was also for two years he was my operations NCO when I was the SEAC, and so he introduced us, and I saw what you were doing with the brand, and I said in a world where. We have eroding fitness uh, within our youth. And where I saw as the SEAC, we had eroding readiness and fitness in our force. Uh, I saw that we needed a brand that could bring a product 
into our local grocery stores and department stores, our commissaries and exchanges, that was a brand for the troops, but more importantly, it was developed by the troops. So you being a combat veteran and how you've gotten after this with Adam and Peter and everything, it's just phenomenal, brother. And seeing the growth the last few days that we've been here at the the commissaries and everything, just seeing it and everything, I'm just honored to be a part of it, brother. So where where are we going to go with this thing, man? What is, what is your vision for the future? Well, the vision for the future is is obviously to continue to solidify our foundation as the brand of the troops. Just just like you said, right? Um, this is a way um, to get health and fitness back in front of our service members. Get them away from that inactive behavior. Get them continually improving their fighting position. Raise morale up. Getting them something they can associate with, right? Um, so, where really where I see this is is continuing to grow and in in, in 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 reigniting that fire that our young troops have out there to get after it and get healthy and, and re-engage again. Um, really set a new precedence in terms of physical fitness and health for our men and women in uniform. Yeah. Um, so I, I see it everywhere for starters. You know, yeah. our, our main uh, goal right now and what we're continuing to do is fostering our relationship with the commissaries and working toward the exchanges and the NAXs and all that jazz. Um, and, and I see us setting up, you know, commissary runs where we continue yeah. to do what we did today. Um, we get out there, we, we do PT with these young guys and gals and command staff, mm-hmm. um, lead by example, but get out there, motivate them um, and see the change that can can really happen within institutions and organizations simply by leading by example and bringing that energy to the table. And that's what downrange supplements is, is going to be able to do for our men and women in uniform. You know, it's something that they can call their own. Yeah. You know, everything's relatable. Your first call pre-workout. That's when yeah. they got first call. They're doing PT in the morning. Yep. Their rehydration and recovery with nine line, right? Your nine yeah. line medevac recovery report. Yeah, yeah. Um, your mermite, you know, protein and field recovery. Your mermite chow. Everyone wants Absolutely. mermite, hot, hot mermite chow right out yeah. the field. No one wants an MRE out Fuck there. Yeah, brother. Um, yeah. You know, our rest, our rest and refit, our refit, you know, greens and humic fulvic. So the, these are all products that, that they can associate with terminology and things that they're learning on a daily basis, which means that, that they that they can um, uh, um, associate with it. They can they can really understand it and make it part of themselves. Does, yeah. does that make sense? They can associate with the brand, making it again, the brand of the troops. Yeah. And with the overall goal being is is morale, morale, welfare um, and physical fitness and bringing that back to the forefront of troop readiness. So I don't know about you, brother, but uh, today we, we had an interesting day at the uh, commissary today and we had a, a customer come up and, you know, and said to both of us, hey, are you guys uh, in the military? <laughs> yeah. And I said, no, we both said, no, I've, I'm retired. And you said, hey, I, I got a veteran. out yeah. Yeah, 13 years ago. Yeah. She goes, why do you guys look so young? I said, well, <laughs> talking that, to a 60 year old CIA. Yeah. So a guy that's almost 60 <laughs> years old, the guy's been out of the military for 13 years. And people don't realize there's this stigma that when you get out, that all of a sudden you're supposed to be unhealthy. Yep. And you're supposed to allow yourself to go and not do PT and workout and everything. And the last two days, you and I have done some pretty good workouts, man. You know, I, I got to scunionize your ass yesterday. It was like a fat kid chasing his mom through Walmart with that, that yeah. functional training routine. No, that's routine. a funny one there. That, <laughs> that's a funny one, yeah. Yeah, we got to give him a drum roll on that one, yeah. But you, you took the wood to my ass today, you know. I mean, you know, you got me on that flush and blood and everything, you know, and and everything. And, uh, in, 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 by the way, those muscles are purdy. All right. They're real purdy brother. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure they get you up to the top of the Hindu Kush, man. Not, not quite, but we're working on it. We're, yeah. we're getting there. <laughs> we, we got, we got tools to help us. <laughs> but when you hear things like that, like a, a, a young customer, young lady comes up to us and says, man, you guys look so young. What does that mean to you? That, that tells me there's a, there's a, a real systemic problem, you know, w- within the military organization. And like you said, everyone's been conditioned to be sick, to stay sick, to have an excuse, to, to not do more, to not do enough. They're afraid of losing their VA disability. They're, they're afraid of having to do more than what they've been tasked to do, whatever the case may be. Um, it's, I mean, what that really clearly showed us is there's been a very dangerous precedent set within our military fighting force that you need to be sick and be indentured and everything else. And, and that is absolutely counterproductive to team cohesiveness, to mission effectiveness and what our military men and women stand for. We're, we're the greatest country in the world with the greatest fighting force in the world. 
why would we not continue to foster that? What what the men and women that blazed the trail before us, your grandparents, my yeah. grandparents, our you know uncles, whatever everybody. It's you know it's an American tradition to to be a patriot and serve this great country. And I want to hit on what you just said about the VA disability compensation program. I spent 38 years in uniform. You spent years in uniform. I'm I'm a retiree. You're a veteran, but we're both 100 percent disabled mm-hmm. veterans. Yep. And every day we still get out and work our asses off physically. Absolutely. We still, you know, we were in Rock Island Arsenal and we, we did a big PT session with the NCOs from uh, First Army. Like you, we mentioned earlier, we're going to PT with the staff from 42nd MPs, the commanders and the first sergeants, everything on Thursday. And it just kills me that people think they have to be as unhealthy and unfit as possible to maximize that VA disability benefit. What's your message to our fellow veterans when they have that kind of attitude and and we see how you and I, you know, still get after it even though we're 100% permanent and total. Yeah, and, and, and the VA can't just take your disability benefits That's away. That's right. You yeah. know, they, they have to have legitimate reasons to show that, that you like whether it's traumatic brain injury or combat PTSD, that it's gotten better. But it is absolutely your right to mitigate those issues through the most natural and healthy way possible yeah. to keep you either A, if you're still in or you're offsetting that in the reserves or guard or whatever the case may be, but but you're able to effectively execute as a leader if you're still in the military mm-hmm. or B, as a family member with your family or C, just as a, a community member continuing to lead by example and serve after your service, you know, whatever that may look like through nonprofit service, community service, whatever. Um, and, and that's, I mean, really where we're at with that. You know, the other thing, yesterday we were uh, at the Lewis Commissary. And, you know, we were right by the front door where we had our, uh, our booth set up and everything. And every time folks would come in, you and I would just spew energy and enthusiasm and Adam and everything to the point that the commissary manager came over and said, man, you got this whole commissary fired up. But how many leaders have we seen the last two days that were just kind of coming in and looking like sad? I'm not sad sack. I'm talking about officers, senior NCOs. Uh, I know you saw that yeah, just like I did. Yeah, you, the, know? you know, you had you had senior leaders coming in, uh, you know, absolutely like their lives were miserable. Yeah. You know, like Eeyore with his tail hanging. Oh, poor, yeah. sorry me. Or yeah. or with an unapproachable, you know, air of arrogance. Yeah, they you just, know, yeah, they, this it, angry mf kind of thing with this air of arrogance, like don't talk to me or anything like that. And people wonder why we have the challenges we have now with recruiting and retention. And when I see leaders like that, like we saw a senior NCO today that walked right by us, we tried to talk to the guy and he acted like we weren't even there. Absolutely. And I can only imagine if he is treating his young airmen like that or his young his young soldiers like that, or if his officer treats him like that, I guarantee he's probably pissing and moaning about shit like that. And when I see that, so I think that's part of the problem we talk about all the time, you and I, in terms of what we got to get after in our military, man. No, no, absolutely. I mean, again, that's an issue. And I mean, when, when you see that type, when, when you're out in public, whether it's a commissary, yeah. even if he's not, you know, at the company CP or whatever the case may be, yeah. you have other service members and, and lower enlisted that are seeing that behavior and seeing that air of arrogance or seeing that negative attitude. Yeah. And, and you're literally breaking down the ability to mentor, to coach, to teach, because now you're shutting that person off. They don't want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, they, they don't you don't you're not bringing the energy to the table to create a cohesive team environment to where yeah. people are going to want to learn and grow from you. Yeah. What you're doing is, is you're saying, oh, you know, that that PV2 or Joe Snuffy, whoever's going to be like, oh, man, this Sergeant Major's a fucking dick. I don't <laughs> I don't want to be around that guy. Yeah. Like, you know, just stay clear. I'm going to do the bare minimum. I'm going to keep my head down. And and that's it. And and that's that's where you start seeing standards just drop. Yeah. Because well, why, why are you going to care if your senior leaders don't care? Why is Joe yeah. going to care? Yeah, I, I felt like, you know, with a couple of those, you know, that I just wanted, I wish I had a freaking bullhorn that I could just blow in their freaking ear, you know, that sound of that freaking bullhorn and everything, you know, <laughs> like that, man, How, you know, but, you know, here was the other thing, you and I, again, we were, we were given energy and everything, which I think is a great business practice, especially when you're around the military, and that, what I was proud of is that young sergeant came in. And he was from one of the striker brigades, but he had his PFC with him. His, he had his soldier with him, bringing that soldier in to shop for some healthy stuff at the commissary. And Sergeant they ran Hill. It, 
Sergeant, Sergeant Hill, Hill was his yep, name. The, yep. And I, and I can tell you, I don't know what striker brigade Sergeant Hill is in, but he is doing a great job. He brought his private in there, brand new private, showcasing what the commissary has to offer. And as you and I were talking, that guy made a comment that I really liked. He said, man, you guys are so fired up, you could sell water to whales. He <laughs> says, and I said, well, that's what leaders are supposed to be like, to, to be enthusiastic, to bring energy, to inspire, to motivate. And everything. Why, why wouldn't we be? We're boots on the ground yeah. doing what we love with the people that we love. Yeah. Why would you not be fired up? Yeah. You, you know, there's a lot of, of things that I've gone through in, you know, in my military career, good and bad. Um, yeah. And I've made a lot of mistakes, too. But everything that I learned, you know, on the line and that I've done when I've had good leaders has made me who I am today. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? That, that discipline, that intestinal fortitude, everything else that I have, the ability to execute, moving with a purpose, all those little things. Yeah. You know, regardless that I, I got that from my time in service. Yeah. And, and, and so if I am sitting with a guy like you, if we all look up to you, you're, you're one of the best senior leaders out there, one of the hands down. But if we're out there and we're motivated. Hold my beer, dude. <laughs> if, 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 we're, <laughs> if, if we're out there and motivating troops, I get motivated. And, yeah. the, and then you see that become infectious, right? That, that energy and that attitude and what you bring to the table becomes infectious and more people want to come over and talk. Yeah. And then more people are interested. Oh, yeah. That, what are you doing? Now you're promoting health and fitness. Amongst our country's war fighters who need to be on point, you know, and uh, I know we're running short on time here. So, but uh, you know, I mean, we even made comments to, you know, just to try and inspire people. Hey, do you want to have a competitive advantage over your enemy, whether that's you know the Russian military, communist China, terrorists, or whoever? And I could tell that the direction we're going because of integrated deterrence and things like that. That. You know, you asked me a question today about combat experience and everything, and I, I said, you go to your normal infantry platoon, you might find the platoon sergeant that has hard combat experience. I'm talking about hard combat experience like you faced in northern Afghanistan and everything, and that I saw all over the country of Afghanistan uh, and everything. But uh, your, your squad leaders might have a right shoulder sleeve insignia, or they might have deployment experience, but not the hard squad level fighting that was 10 years ago and everything and everybody below that to include the lieutenant has zero combat experience and now trying to talk to them about betting being ready to fight and win on any given day it just seems like it people they don't fathom it now and i think that's a direction we can't go in our country and we can't go in our military because uh pretty soon we will relinquish competitive advantages to any threats out there no, absolutely. I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. Um, <clears throat> in Afghanistan, it was more my PSD days, but but Hawija and Iraq well, still, was, was well, more, yeah. more more of the hardened days. But yeah. Um, but but yeah. It's. I mean, I'm sure it's it's changed a lot. I mean, just just what I see going to commissaries nowadays, being out 13 years. I mean, what I see being acceptable, like I would have been chaptered out. Yeah, I would have been done. Yeah, you, you know, for for what I'm seeing nowadays. So yeah. and and especially like I, like you said, the biggest thing is just the health aspect of it is is getting these yep. guys and gals to get back after it, getting and, them motivated, and, and getting them reengaged. Peak operating condition, physically, mentally, emotionally, technically, and technically. What, what, what's that old saying? I will maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. Hey, brother, where, where, where is that going? Yeah, well, uh, bring I'm, it I'm back. Hoping, we're bringing it back. That's yeah, what we're doing. We're bringing it back. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? Now, let's from the business perspective. Now, I I coined this hashtag called Corporate Enlisted Takeover. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, I'm a serial entrepreneur as an enlisted guy. You're an entrepreneur as an enlisted guy. We're in business together now and everything. And I'm really focused on showcasing that as much responsibility as you had in Iraq and Afghanistan as a non-commissioned officer, that you can have the same amount of responsibility, respect in the, in the corporate world. And you're really getting after it now with downrange supplements, brother. So, uh, so corporate enlisted takeover, brother. Why is it so important to showcase that enlisted, former enlisted people like you can be CEOs, can be entrepreneurs? How important? Why is that so important? Well, number one, it sets a standard and it sets an example for individuals to understand that there is life after the military, right? Um, and there's a bunch of great corporations and companies out there, but the, the majority of them that have become very well known in the entrepreneurial world are run by former officers, right? Yeah. And it's become very protected and guarded. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and if it's almost like badge protecting. Oh, yeah. you're, not, you're not an alpha. You don't deserve to monetize outside yeah. of the military. Yeah, yeah. You don't have the right to do that. I'm in charge. Yeah. No, that's not how it works. You know, if you, I, and I strongly believe this in, and, and I believe you do too, 
Um, but the amount of work as a non-commissioned officer that you have to put in, um, the intestinal fortitude, the discipline, you know, track and everything. I mean, you take that same work ethic and that same discipline. I mean, we would take over corporate America with non-commissioned officers, literally, because Absolutely. we're going to those NCOs are going to work ten times harder than those yeah. alphas are. Yeah, yeah. Because those alphas are used to having NCOs <laughs> doing all the work for them, <laughs> and then they go, "Oh, yep, here's your here's your assessment, good to go. All right, yeah, thanks, yeah. thanks for writing yeah. that out for me, Sergeant. Here's your signature." Yeah. Um, and, and that's not to take away from officers. Well, no, you know, we're not anti-officer. No, all. not not at all. Not, not at all. I've we're just saying, the, hey, we, we're gonna we. we this is our time can, too. Yeah, yeah, we can compete. In the corporate world, and we're going to continue to do it. And and what that does too is is it is it like MCon Live's a, a perfect thing we got coming Absolutely. up. Absolutely, we're going to be at coming up here um, pretty soon. Um, yeah, but ten it, but, to twelve November, Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, at a, yep, at the at the Expo World Market Center. You yeah, know, I, I had a couple of great conversations with Waco that you introduced me to. Yeah, doing some great stuff. Waco Hoover, be, the president. Yep, and uh, organizer organizer for MCon. It, but that that MCon and what what Waco is trying to do and what you got involved with and the reason you got involved with MCon is a perfect example of what I'm talking about what they're trying to do for veterans in general. We're more focused on the corporate enlisted takeover side, yeah. the non-commissioned officer side. But it's showing individuals that your military service and the, the, the things that you have learned through service can be translated into the corporate world, into the entrepreneurial world, on a level that most people can't even touch. Yeah. Most people go to school for years and years and years to attain that type of business acumen or knowledge. We yeah. already have that inherent preset because of our military Absolutely. service training to be able to go, okay, task and purpose. Here's what I need to do. Here's what we need to get done. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's what we're going to do. If this doesn't work out, our contingency plan to that, like you already have all that knowledge and ability. And if you take that from the military industrial complex and you tra translate that into becoming an entrepreneur or be becoming a CEO or becoming an executive at a large corporation, you're going to be untouchable. And I don't doubt, you know, I've, I have no equivocations about that whatsoever. All right, brother. Um, where can people find Downrange Supplements on social media, and how can they order product? Absolutely. So, so we're on, obviously, on Instagram, TikTok, um, Facebook. Um, you can purchase product through GovX if you want that military and first responder discount. Yeah. Um, obviously, in your commissaries, we'll be going to Oconus and overseas here soon, so you can look at it for your overseas commissaries in the near future. But more importantly, DownrangeSupplements.com, DownrangeSupps.com. Um, so you go to DownrangeSupps.com. We have you know recurring deals, subscription discounts yep. that you can do on there. Um, all the best products, the brand of the troops, baby. So DownrangeSupps.com, get on there, support the movement, make it happen. All right, Kevin Flack. CEO, founder of Downrange Supplements, former non-commissioned officer of the United States Army and combat veteran. Thanks for being here today, brother. But more importantly, thanks for being my teammate, man. Yeah. Thanks for We're having me, brother. We're going to keep pounding, brother. <laughs> Absolutely. All right? And to all of you, thanks for joining us today on Leader Talk, uh, hosted by SEAC retired John Wayne Troxel. We'll see you next time. Keep pounding. Keep getting after life. We'll see you soon. Boom. <laughs>